uh, hand over to Jesus Garcia, who is going to speak on the relationship between socialism and democracy in Cuba. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for your presence here now, very inspiring presence, uh, in particular because I can see people of very different age, including very beautiful young uh, lady or young woman that is sitting here very uh, attending very seriously. <laughs> oh, no. Forgive me. But that was an inspiration for me. For us it's really a very important moment to be, uh, to be here in Manchester where uh, Marx and Engels did a lot of work particular that uh, very known work about the situation of the work, uh, worker, uh, labor class, uh, worker class in, in England. And to see how you are living now, I would like to be here more time in order to have the possibility to meet with other people who couldn't uh, enter to this room now. I hear about that, that there are some restrictions, but no more people to come. But uh, I would like to uh, uh, apologize because of my poor English will not uh, give the possibility to, to, to give you all my uh, all the details of the all the perceptions uh, all the particularities uh, of our system of our life of our society and uh, to apologize because another because of another thing I have an original scene I am physically and physics uh, love to, to account, to take numbers, to make numbers. And uh, yesterday a friend gave me a, a journal, newspaper, very progressive, they said. Uh, and there I found a, a thing that maybe is, it is not a record Guinness, Guinness record, because I read a, a little text Raúl with it, Fidel Castro. And there, in seven lines, I could find no less than eight lines. <laughs> and I would like to talk now a little more, in order to, a little, in order to try to to clarify a little about this. And in order to try, if you can, please, I would like to ask for your help to contact us with that uh, with that uh, journalist in order to help her to be a better informed, in order to do better her work. Because the, the first duty of a journalist is to do the work as best informed as possible, I think. And for example, she wrote, Fidel Castro has resided, he did a resign, uh, maybe in, no, maybe not, in seven minutes, we'll uh, begin the session of our National Assembly and in this National Assembly, we'll talk about the National Assembly after. And we'll, in this National Assembly, we'll, we will uh, elect the presidency of our assembly, etc., etc. It's very important day to day cure. First slide, Fidel Castro has decided to spend more time with his chronic economic failure. I would like to see another country in the world who could live 50 years starting the process of socialist develop, development, starting from older development, a very important concept that may, a lot of people don't understand. And uh, more than this, in addition to this, 50 years under the pressure, the real economic war, and not only economic in many cases, from the side of the most powerful imperialist uh, country in the world. And to talk about economic failure in that condition is very difficult. I simply would like to find a people who could teach us to do the things better in that condition. In that condition. Third uh, lies, or he, she wrote that uh, maybe he will spend more time to thinking about his prison camps. I live uh, 56 years in Cuba, I never met that. Book. Or the ghost of his murdered political opponents. It's terrible. It's, I, I am afraid of Fidel. I, I have the opportunity to, to talk with him uh, one meter uh, between us, and he never did anything bad to me. But. 
uh, or doing whatever else, if, if he, it is that people do when they retire, he didn't say that he will retire. From 50 years in the communist dictatorship business, very interesting concept. Maybe for, uh, for Pinochet, uh, dictatorship business is real business, I think it's real business. Pinochet, Franco, maybe, no, Franco was not so rich. Pinochet was richer than Franco. <laughs> Castro's brother, Raul. Here is a lie, not uh, an open lie. Uh, it's, it's true that Castro is his brother. But where is the lie? Uh, when you present this information in this form, you are highlighting that Castro, Raul is Fidel's brother. And you will think that Raul is in this post because he is Fidel's brother. Here is the lie. It's very important. Uh, one thing we must learn from capital system is how to present uh, the ideas. Because capital system has the really power to show us that, that uh, this white paper is black. And really, we, uh, we socialists, uh, in some cases, for us it's very difficult to explain that this white shit is a really uh, shit. Uh, it's really why we, we are not we, we need to learn from capital but it's not so easy because uh, okay and uh, finally finally uh, she wrote about Raul that is believed to be more progressive than big bro uh, really uh, again another another lie because uh, no lie is not in the question that Raul is more or less progressive than Fidel it is in the question that are presenting uh, Raul as a different, uh, very different, uh, even as uh, an oppos uh, opposition uh, to Fidel in the in the more antagonistic uh, form of, 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 of opposition, and um, it's not anything more uh, far from truth than that. But okay, after after that uh, introduction, forgive me for this introduction, but. Uh, this was very motivating for me to read that. Uh, really, if you can uh, put this journalist in contact with us, I will be very grateful. If she won, I don't know if she won. But uh, my duty today is to see, my duty today is to try to explain uh, about our uh, system of uh, organization of public power. I don't like, I don't love, I don't like to, to talk about uh, Cuban democracy. I don't like to talk about Cuban democracy because this is a concept uh, so manipulated uh, that uh, I don't like it. Because I, I am always, when I begin talks with friends from other countries, with country from other countries, I uh, always uh, start from the position that I will explain how is our system. You will judge the qualities of our system. We will not talk about democratic, democratic or not democratic. We will uh, try to be as most objective, objective as possible and simply analyze how this system gives possibilities to people to be involved in the process of uh, its uh, own development. For us, this is the, the, the real importance for of a system. How the system allows people to attain a, a real human emancipation, I would say, in that or uh, astral concept. Here in, in Cuba, uh, the first uh, step in this sense was uh, 1st January 1959, when the Cuban Revolution overthrew uh, Batista dictatorship. We immediately began working on the basis of uh, we could say traditional uh, democratic liberal system. Uh, in particular, in 1959, we reinforced human constitution. We have uh, a rich tradition of uh, constitution. Even when Cubans were fighting uh, against uh, Spanish uh, colonialism in the camp of battles, uh, we organized a government and organized a government on the, over the basis of a constitution. And in 1940, in Cuba, was approved 
bourgeois constitution, but a very progressive bourgeois constitution. This uh, bourgeois constitution, uh, of course, didn't work during the time of the Odista dictatorship, and first step did the Cuban constitution was that uh, we reinforced that constitution, and on the basis of this constitution, we began our process of people emancipation. But immediately we understood that uh, for a real deep uh, human development, that was not enough. And we uh, begin to, began to introduce change, uh, in particular in the political life. Very important uh, change, change that always try to uh, put the people, the individual, closer to the real power in the ruling of the society. And so on, during the first um, 27 years, we uh, tried different forms of organization of our government. And finally, in, 19, in 1974, In 1974, okay. in 1974, we uh, enforced, after uh, two years uh, trying it we, in an experience, we enforced the, the system that we have, have in the current time, the system of uh, uh, popular power. We call it that our state, the form of organization of our state is called the system of uh, people's power. This system is organized at three levels. One level, the most important level, is of course the people. <coughs> this is the most important level. Each individual in our country. For us, the most important is each individual in our country. The other level is the municipal level. In Cuba, we have 169 municipalities. Each municipality has its municipal assembly. We have in Cuba 14 provinces. Each province, each province has its provincial assembly. And we have in Cuba our national assembly. National assembly is the highest organ of power in Cuban society. But these are local organ of power with autonomy. Of course, with autonomy, that doesn't mean uh, divorce between the center, the whole nation, and the localities. A system that works together. The members of this assembly are directly elected by the people. The proposals for candidates to these assemblies, to these assemblies, are proposed by the people in different forms, in different processes. Uh, members of these assemblies, of this organ of power, are elected by people directly in different moments, in different forms. Are proposed by people in different forms. In Cuba, we have election to this level every two and a half years. And we have election to this level every five years. The people who are elected, elected to this uh, representation, the representative, are people, normal people, students, uh, workers, uh, household wife, uh, every, everybody could be elected. Every human citizen older than 16 years may be elected to this level and older than 18 to the National Assembly. And every Cuban people older than 16 years have right to elect. Of course, an exception in the law, uh, people have, that is mentally ill, uh, people that is in prison uh, and has not some right, maybe by law, but this is a... Uh, the people, the representatives, to this level, after they are elected, they continue working or they continue doing the life they were doing before. 
for example, during the 22 years I am member of this assembly, I continue being a scholar in my institute at the same time. I should combine the two uh, functions. I was even eight years member of this assembly, and I continue here, here, and in my work. People in these uh, assemblies don't receive any more uh, for the service in this uh, duty. Uh, I receive the wage I receive in my institute, no more. If I should travel to some place in our country in functions uh, of work to the assembly, of course, I will travel with the expenses of the, the assembly, but especially to that, for that situation. And of course, uh, the center where the people work uh, give facilities uh, because our questions should be done in, during the working time, and uh, we have facility for that. And another very important question. People elected to this level should give account regularly about the work they are doing in this level. And if the electors don't agree the form in which I am working, they meet, they can remove me at any moment. It's organized by law, the process that should be followed in order to start the process of uh, removing uh, some representative uh, people. These are very important questions. Uh, for example, the representative at this level, by law, should uh, celebrate at least two, twice in a year, meetings with the people. I should uh, meet at least twice in a year with the, my electors in the world. In this meeting, I should explain how did I work in the assembly, I should explain how these this other levels work. Of course, people, people in Cuba is very good informed by our press, etc., about the work of this level. But in the independence of that, in this meeting, we explain the principal ideas, the principal results. And in this meeting, we receive the critics of the people about the work of this level and the demands of the people. We discuss that demands with the people. We try to find solution uh, with the work together of the people and the representatives, and, and so on. That is a form of good work. And more or less the same if with, with, with the other uh, representatives. This is brief, briefly about this level. I will go faster. I only will uh, say something about this level, because this uh, is uh, related to the lies concerning fidelity. The national level. Our National Assembly is the highest organ of power. This is the organ that uh, has possibilities to introduce change in the Constitution, but, very important, not every change may be introduced by this organ. By our Constitution, uh, are some change that should be introduced after a referendum on In Cuba, we have the, the, the form, the legal form of the referendum. And the most important change in the Constitution should be introduced by referendum. And so on. I have another, another regulation uh, for the introduction of change. But the, I, I need more time for this. But the important question. The National Assembly has a presidency of the National Assembly. The National Assembly, people all over the world call it, and in Cuba too, it's a state, call the National Assembly the Cuban Parliament. The Cuban Parliament is not a traditional parliament. That's why I don't like to call it uh, a parliament. Because our deputies, that is the name of the representative at this level, our deputies don't work permanently as deputies. They work in the workplace. And they work in the work of the National Assembly simultaneously. Our deputies meet at least twice in a year. But between this meeting, the National Assembly is living through an organ that we call Permanent Commission. This Permanent Commission, for example, we have a Permanent Commission for Education, a Permanent Commission for the Health Care, and so on. This Permanent Commission are permanently following the work of the education in Cuba, the work of the healthcare, the work of the industry, and, uh, and control, are controlling the decision 
of the National Assembly are analyzing the work in order to introduce and to propose the necessary change in our uh, system of working, etc., etc. This is a very important organ for the National Assembly. The National Assembly has an organ that is called Council of State. This Council of State is the organ that, between periods of session, have some faculties representing the power of the National Assembly. It's, it's an executive organ, but only some power. The, the highest organ of power is this, the National Assembly. Okay, now we have in Cuba 614 deputies. The Council of State has 31 members. The presidency of the National Assembly has a president, a secretary, and a vice president. All these, all these are elected from among the deputies by the deputies in an election of second grade, a second grade election. In Cuba, ah, and we have two that we call Council of Ministers. Council of Ministers is the government of Cuban society, the government in the administrative sense, because in socialism the concept of government is quite different. It's not simply administration, but that is for another meeting. Uh, the Council of Ministers, the minister, is not obligatory that they uh, should be uh, deputies. May be deputies, may not be deputies. Okay? But the Council of State, I said that has uh, 31 members, has a presidency, a, he has a president, a first vice president, five uh, another vice president, and the other member. This is a collective organ of decision. The president of the Council of State has almost, has not uh, any power uh, as individual. Uh, practically, uh, the president has formal uh, powers as individual. All decisions in this organ should be taken collectively. This organ is subordinated to the National Assembly. Fidel, the Cuban dictator, is simply the president of the Council of State. Raul, the brother, by his merit, by pro because of proposal of power of people who proposed uh, him as proposed the other deputies, as deputy first, after was elected by the assembly as vice, first vice president. That's why, that's why Raul, now during the time Fidel was sick, was in the uh, working as president, because by law the vice president substitute the president when the president is sick. Very normal, I think. And uh, a president, a vice president, Raul, Fidel, I underline, has not uh, almost any, any faculties as individuals. He has another very important characteristic, I would say, that uh, for some people is difficult to understand. Fidel has his authority because of his life, more than 50 years dedicated to fight for the rights of the people. That is more important than any power in paper. And in this sense, Fidel is not the Cuban president. It's not only that Fidel is not the dictator, uh, because this is an organ of collective direction. Fidel is not a president because a president in an old system has more faculties as individual than Fidel. Fidel, for example, he can't appoint a minister, he can appoint an ambassador, etc., etc. And any president in any country appoint minister, change minister, and uh, put uh, their friends in the post of minister, etc., etc., etc. And Cuba, that's, that is impossible because it's an organ of collective decision. I think I have spoken uh, more than I should spoke, but I uh, apologize, but I would like to hear your question now. I'm trying to answer.